What's up? My name's Harmagito, and today I'm going to show you how to analyze your tracks in Rekordbox. So let's jump right in. So as you can see, I have the performance side of Rekordbox pulled up right now. Um, there's really two ways that you can do this. Uh, the first way is you can pull it in from your iTunes, and the second way is you can pull it in from your desktop. Now I like to have everything organized in my iTunes, and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you the iTunes way first and then I'm going to show you how to analyze it just pulling it in from your desktop. So we're going to go down to iTunes right here on the side panel as you can see. And I'm going to click on iTunes and I have already uh, the song that I want to import in a playlist. I scroll all the way down and then I, I have playlist generated within Rekordbox to kind of correspond to my uh, organization in iTunes so everything can really be organized there. And so I'm going to take this new track called Empire and I'm going to pull this over into my discography. Okay. Now that I did that, we can go down here and see that Rekordbox is already doing some kind of analysis. And it's kind of picked up that the track is at 140. which is correct because I produced this track. Up here on the top left, it'll show you your performance or the export mode. We want to analyze the track in the export mode. So we're going to pull that up. And then we're just going to take this track and we're going to drag it into the viewer. Well, what I want to do is I want to first check the tempo. So to do that, I'm going to turn on the tempo to make sure it's locked into the correct grid. So right here you see the temp, so right here you can see that the tempo and we're just going to check it right now to make sure that the whole track all the way through we're going to click through different points and see if it's still in, in sync. See how it's right on the right on the transient so that looks pretty good. Let's get closer to the build. So the tempo of this track is spot on. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go back in record box and I'm going to see this little lock button. I'm going to click that and so that's going to lock down the beat grid. So what you're first going to do is you're going to, now that our tempo is set, we're going to hit quantize and it should, it took us back to the one. So now we're just going to set some cue points. So that's my first cue point. And if you hit the space bar on your laptop in record box, that's start and stop. So I did it at the beginning of the track, now I'm going to do it where her vocals come in. And if you see, I, with my mouse I can click through the track to kind of get there quicker than just waiting. Because you're trying to get through, if you're getting through multiple tracks, it's important. Right there. So now let's go to the build. So when the quantize is on, it's going to snap to the grid. When when quantize is off, you can set a cue point where it doesn't snap to the grid. So it's nice when you're trying to get through a bunch of tracks quickly and set your you know, I usually like to set one at the beginning, uh, the breakdown, the build, and then at the drop. And then sometimes in between, like maybe if there's like a phrase that I think that could be used in a different song, like maybe a word that's said right before the drop that I could cut off the song before then, then I like to kind of maybe play with that because then you can kind of do some hot cue juggling. And so that could be something cool that you could do. 
So over here you can see I can make it, uh, I can dive deeper or I can um, pull out to see the track better. So that's good if you really want to kind of see where you are in the transient. Okay, so now I'm going to fast forward. Then I'm going to set one at the drop. And as you can see, bam. It's locked me in on that key point. Now I showed you how to import your track using iTunes. Here's another way you can import your tracks. What you can do is I have just a, another track of mine just over here in my desktop. And I'm just going to pull this over. And as you can see, it, it wants to add it. So it's importing right there. So if I go into my discography, which I like to keep all of my tracks that I produce in my, a discography folder, and then from there I'll also put my tracks within different playlists. So that's a pro tip. If you're organized, you can easily, if you have to DJ a trance set or a, a deep house set or a dubstep set, you already have all your songs in different folders instead of it just being in one massive folder where you're like, oh, I don't know what to do. That way you can get out and get your set list prepared quicker because it's all about time efficiency here. All right, so now that we've got uh, this new track that I have, it's a feature-based track. So I'm just going to pull it up in here. Now I know this track is at 150, so that's correct. So let's just check the tempo. So that looks pretty good. Let's go over here and check it. So that looks pretty good. Here's, here's something interesting. So I know as a DJ that I could either just drop it straight into this, or it would be cool to also have a transition, which would be this. So for instance, like if I'm about to drop into um, this track and I'm playing another track, that's a cool little introduction that you could do. So that way it drops right into that and I really like that so I'm going to set an extra cue point there. And so that's kind of what I was talking about in which like these little phrases or maybe words that you would want to also add a hot cue to, that that's really great to add. When I do genres like feature bass or dubstep, I tend to mix pretty quickly so I may only play one part of the song and then move on to the next song and drop it into another part of the song. So. Setting your cue points or your hot cues is very, um, you know, you want to put a little bit of thinking into it. You know, some people like to do A, B, and C would, would be only the beginning, the breakdown, and the drop. That way they always know what three, what top three hot cues they have. And then from there, maybe they'll add different hot cues. You just really want to have a method to how you set your hot cues and in terms of your analysis of your tracks because that will really help you prepare. There will be less thinking on the day of your performance if you go ahead and prepare like this. And you, if you're very methodical and have a, have, a, have a plan, have it set up, and then that way when you get into performance mode, you can just be on autopilot and actually think about what you're doing and be creative and not have to worry about where I am in my track because you've already have a system set in place. So those are my pro tips. Thank you so much for stopping by. My name's Harmaguito. Please like and subscribe. And if you have any questions or any future videos that you'd like to see, please put them in the comments below. And I'll see you next time.